You ain't know that's her kid's name tattooed on her forehead. You didn't know she had her kid's name tattooed on her forehead. Is that okay? What do you mean? She she's had that for years. So oh, I didn't know. <laughs> I've never seen this before. She has had that for years on her forehead. Her kid's name, Bash and Bash. I, I don't understand. You, you niggas think I'd be clear? I am the most unblack black person that you'll ever meet. The most you know, black I, thing I see, the black. most black thing I do is say nigga. That's it. That's you all don't I got. have to be black to know what's going on in popular. <laughs> yes, nigga. Like I don't know. Like I had this shit's fucking weird. This bitch has got tattoo on her forehead. This is weird as fuck. What's going on here? Bash or something like that. She cute as fuck, but that t forehead tattoo. What the hell? Did you see her speech at the Republican mm -hmm. National Convention? Mm -mm. Hell no. What is she doing there? All right, I'm about to. I'm about to play. She, she taps into the niggas. What you mean? What's she doing to, there? I'm about to play it, and then y'all can give y'all perspective. It's like we need this something that the niggas can, uh, can, can, can relate to. <laughs> this is really bizarre. Hello. My name is Amber Rose. Is now on the stage. Let's listen to her. Model, rapper, Thank television you. personality, ex-girlfriend of Kanye West. But most um, she's endorsed I'm a Donald mother. Trump. Let's listen. My whole world revolves around providing for my children keeping them safe, and giving them an opportunity for a better life. That's something that unites all American parents, whether we're Republicans, Democrats, conservatives, or liberals. We all want a better country for our children. But I'm here tonight to tell you, no matter your political background, that the best chance we have to give our babies a better life is to elect Donald Trump President of the United States. <laughs> now you may be wondering why I'm up here telling you this. I'm no politician and I don't want to be. But I do care about the truth. And the truth is that the media has lied to us about Donald Trump. I know this because for a long time I believed those lies, so I'm here to set the record straight. The first person I knew who supported Donald Trump was my father. I was shocked. My entire family is racially diverse, and I believed the left-wing propaganda that Donald Trump was a racist. My father said, no, he's not, Amber. What are you talking about? And when I insisted, he said, prove it. So to prove my father wrong, I did my research and looked into all things Donald Trump. People have to do their research. I watched all the rallies, and I started meeting so many of you, his red hat wearing supporters. <laughs> I realize Donald Trump and his supporters don't care if you're black, white, gay, or straight. It's all love. And that's when it hit me. These are my people. This is where I belong. <laughs> my fear of judgment, of being misunderstood, of getting attacked by the left, and I put the red hat on too. Thank you. Love you too. I never felt more free and more love for my country than I do now. I want to thank my father, who's in the audience tonight, for opening my eyes. He served over 20 years in the U.S. military. Thank you for your service, Dad. I love you so much. Thank you. When I met the president and Melania for the first time, he was kind and generous and funny as hell. Very funny. The first lady was gracious and smart with a smile that will brighten up any room. If you're watching this tonight, you know our country is in trouble, just like me. When you go to the store and buy food for your family, you're shocked. 
When you fill up your gas tank, you're pissed. I know I am. <laughs> and when you turn on the news, you are just exhausted. Inflation is out of control. And you know in your heart, it was not like this under Donald Trump. My message to you tonight Look comes from a humble place. The left told me to hate Trump, and even worse, to hate the other side, the people who support him. When you cut through the lies, you realize the truth. American families were better when Donald Trump was president. We were safer, wealthier, and stronger. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote to put money back in our pockets and good food on our kids' plates. Yes. <laughs> or, as Trump would say, it's a vote to make America great again. Thank you so much. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I want to let y'all speak first. That was so bizarre. I think but it would have hit different if she was wasn't reading from her teleprompter and that she just came off the dome and said it. I, I probably would have felt it a little bit more, but she was clearly reading. Yeah, you didn't like the speech. Uh, no, she was reading. Like somebody wrote it for her. <laughs> <laughs> no, nigga, like some like nigga Anton. If he went to this shit, just like I ain't capping her, and I ain't fucking jocking this nigga or nothing. But nigga Anton wouldn't read from a fucking teleprompter. That nigga go up there, say his shit. And sit down. It just hit different when it's your thoughts and you're not fucking reading the shit. You could have said off if you truly believed all that shit, you didn't have to say it because it would have been your life experience and you just would have fucking said it. But the pure fact that she was reading, it didn't hit the it, did, it didn't hit the way it should have been mm. for me. I just I just thought it was bizarre that she was even there, but I, I got a feeling that it worked. That's what's crazy. So the pure it's fact that work. under her name it said rapper and influencer says all you need to know, nigga. Like those, she's like, look, we about to, yeah, they, we about to get this, 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 this big booty, big titty, pretty bitch that black people like, and we about to put her up on the stage. And I think that it was. Uh, she, she had to get a bag for it, though. No, just, let's let, let's be clear. Previous to fifteen plus years ago, these kind of people were not speaking up at these events at all. It's just like our previous conversation, nigga. Look what's popping. The, in, the people in the entertainment world speaking of on like professional shit. Like, nigga, you would not grace this stage if you weren't a politician, if you weren't something high value person. You're just a regular rapper influencer. And it's just it's just what it is in 2024. I think that it was a I think that it was a good speech. I think it was short, concise, to the point. It's hard not to be concise when you're reading. It was the level of authenticity. It's not true. We see though. people read all the time, and that don't necessarily mean that they're able to communicate as effectively. Well, then whoever wrote that shit for him fucked it up. No. No, man. Dr. King ain't. He was, he, he was reading his speech. Ain't nobody ever tripped off that shit. I think that it was a good speech. I think that she did what she was supposed to do. I think that it resonated with a certain demographic of people. It tapped into a certain certain group of people that otherwise would not have even, even taken them serious, like women, like a certain type of women. Uh, I think that she has like twenty something million followers on Instagram. Oh, and and people, you know, if he's if he's trying to make sure that he's capturing and, and you know getting these swing voters, or if he's trying to convert certain people, because you don't have to try to get people that already rock with you. They rock with you, right? You don't have to get people that that like like his his vice presidential pick, right? His running mate, uh, J.D. Vance. He's from a swing state. He's from Ohio. You know what I'm saying? So when you go for it, when you're trying to capture the heart of the people, and you're trying to bring people up there that resonate, you want people that that have a strong following. You want people that can influence because influencers are the, are the you know people that determine what goes on in the culture and in the society. And you want somebody to be able to communicate effectively. I think that she hit every single thing that they wanted her up there for. I think that they even asked her because in, on certain things, you'll see that she doesn't even, she covers up her forehead tattoo with makeup sometimes. I think that they wanted her up there. They wanted the face tattoo. They wanted her to do what she's doing. And 
I think it, it hit. I think it resonated personally, in my opinion. So, so, so she covered up. That, so it's not absurd that I haven't seen this tattoo because you said she covers it up. Sometimes she covers it up. Sometimes it's not covered up. I've never seen it. So, okay. But the first thing I noticed, she got a long neck. Listen, somebody said, who is Amber supposed to be appealing to? I'll wait. The same people that Tia Mari is appealing to. So we will sit here and we'll hold her accountable and say she out here looking like she dumb. But that same video that I reacted to when it said that, listen, Tia Mari is wrong. It got over 1.3 million views and a lot of likes from the other people that actually disagree with me and rock with her. So just because we in this small demographic or this small space or just because we may disagree does not mean that they don't impact and influence other people. A hundred percent. It was it was a what I just said. It was it, it was a good speech. Like she delivered what she read. It was great. But I just for me, it would have meant more if, if she didn't read it. Trina says, Cap, as a black educated woman, she definitely not anyone that I respect, let alone follow. But it's 450 million people in the United States of alone. So you, uh, in the United States. And Look, she chose. Y'all got to Y'all got to start taking yourself out of the equation and out of the conversation. They're not trying to register with you. They're they're trying to register with the people that register with her. There's Y'all, a reason that they that left. Only people in the world that 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 only people that resonate with y'all. <laughs> you not. She's you not, not trying to resonate with educated black women at all. That's not what she's doing. Correct. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Because an educated black woman has probably already Don't. made up her mind on who she's gonna vote for in the first place. And educated black women don't listen to women in tight dresses with tattoos on their forehead. Correct. So she does a whole demographic. Okay, Trina. Cool. I agree with you. Now what? But she resonates with a group of women that's one that want to hear what she got to say, and can be influenced by her her going up to the Republican National Convention and saying, "Okay, you know what? Hmm, interesting." She resonates with a whole group of people who love fucking tattoos. That's that's one. Let's start there. <laughs> they left that shit on her forehead for a reason. Listen, bro. This is this is what I know. This is what I know for sure. Is that Jesus Christ? These people are retarded. All right, I'm gonna read that super chat shortly. <laughs> God, he's gonna say shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Because yeah, I knew that people see things a little bit different. It's, it's like people only see what they see. And it's so the, the most the most dumb thing that you can do is not step outside of your own comfort zone or your own space or your mentality to see think to see a broader view and expand your mind so that you can understand how the world works. That's why bring we up tra- Anthony, bring up Anthony Logan's um, to, uh, yeah. comment. That's Who? a good question. Yeah, that, Anthony, that's... Brian Logan. Yeah, ABL, that's what I, yeah, mm-hmm. that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Who do educated black women listen to? Nobody. Nobody, because they think they know it fucking all. <laughs> they don't listen to nobody. They say, "Who do we register with?" Nobody. Yourself. Yep. Like I got y'all a degree. I don't even agree with yourselves. He is one hundred percent correct. That is absolutely spot on. Shout out to ABL. But I mean, people need to step outside of their comfort zone. Listen, listen, I don't need to go and galvanize my base. I need to go and galvanize and speak to people that are swing voters or otherwise would have wouldn't have considered voting for me. If you with me, you was already with me. It's the reason why they're not over there doing um, rallies and campaigns in California. And even the Democrats don't even go over there because they already got it sold up. They know how you're going to vote already. They're not over there. The only reason that Trump was over there in New York was because he couldn't go nowhere because he was he was stuck during the trial. You know who I would be interested in um, who has something to say about this is um, Candace Owens. I wonder what she had to say about that. She probably didn't because, I mean, Candace, I don't think that Candace is going to criticize Amber Rose for for endorsing the person that she actually thinks should be president of the United States. of Oh, oh, never mind. Just kidding. It's live. Amber Rose plus more. Yeah, Candace Owens. She did talk about it. <laughs> oh, maybe she did. But I don't think that she's going to talk negatively about it, though, is what I'm saying. I don't think she's going to criticize it. Um, I, I think it was a good speech. I think she did exactly what she was supposed to do. She was up there for five minutes. 
Um, she was concise. She didn't make it overly complicated. She made the point in that what most people resonate with, which is I thought he was racist and I did my own research. And now I just I came to the conclusion that that's not true. She established her credibility by saying who her father was and how she got challenged in the first place. And then ultimately she she hit it home by saying that, listen, the things that we really care about, that's the stuff that we really was paying attention to when he was in office. When he was in office. I think that that's, she hit every single point that she was supposed to hit. I think she did exactly what she was supposed to do. Candace Owen says she resonates people in this culture like people on OnlyFans. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> yep. Yeah, can yeah, you probably should play it. it was... No, I'm gonna save that one. Yeah, that, 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 that makes sense though, because she's right. She does. That's this is who resonates with her. <laughs> probably OnlyFans. Uh, only but I mean, models, but, but, like, but, but booty shaking, baby mamas. But Candace, I mean, but Amber Rose said that in her speech too. She said, listen, and it's absolutely true. And that um, you can be conservative, but the one thing that we advocate for is freedom and less censorship and also the freedom to be able to choose for yourself, pursuit of life, liberty, and, you know, happiness. And so I think that the only people that are a lot more, a lot more aggressive and trying to force you to see it their way is liberals. And she hit on that point too. And that's why I thought that it was a great speech. A lot of people are so vi- busy focused on the messenger but they're not focusing on who the messenger is speaking to. Yeah. Most most people that were her that were her audience, had she not been there, is probably not even paying attention to the Republican National Convention. So if she can tap into a fraction of the audience to then get an interested in and, and do their research also or to speak to their point, then she absolutely did her job. Regardless of whether we like her or not. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into 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 her being there, man. Like that, that's crazy. I still think it's very bizarre to see her in anything political after she did the slut walk. But I have to admit, I it worked. It worked. Whether I I, I wouldn't care which side she was on, if she was on the Republicans or the Democrats, I think it would be bizarre to see this woman in anything involving politics. But because it's Donald Trump. He's able to make that shit work. If it was with Biden, it would not look the same way. It just I, I'm okay with people voting for Biden. I'm no, I'm not voting for Biden, and I don't think that he would be, you know, the best candidate. I'm okay if you're voting for Biden, if you could, if you can justify why it makes sense and how that affects your life. But most people that you talk to when you have a conversation, because. The democratic process or the voting process, you have to respect it. So if somebody says that this is more closely aligned with what my lifestyle is supposed to be or what I think is going to be best for my family, I respect that. The thing that I don't respect is the fact that when you ask somebody why they voting for somebody, the only reason that they can say in most instances is that they don't like the other guy. Yeah, it's usually uh, the That's lesser to the evils. I'm not going to disrespect your right to vote and what you think is best for your family. But what I am questioning is if you are an uninformed person that chooses, I don't know. I don't know. I got a whole nother perspective, bro. And I say it all the time, bro. I I always respect people's right to vote. I, I respect the process. I respect a lot of things, but I just think that a lot of people are uninformed and they can't communicate clearly why they're going one way or the other. Now, again, I could disagree with you, but that don't mean that I'm not going to respect your right to it. So. Amber Rose. Shit, mm-hmm. man. Her, her, her PR people is... Uh, her PR people is probably second to Howie Mandel, man. Jesus, they they stay in the spotlight somehow. It's yeah, crazy. she do stay... She, she do stay relevant and she do stay in the spotlight. So.